I'm Mark Harvey and uh, I'm an economic sociologist working at the University of Essex. At the moment my research is an ESRC uh, professorial research fe fellowship. I have a small team and we're working on a major issue, the major issues of climate change and the finitude of uh, earth resources, particularly land, uh, food and energy. One of the things that I'm really interested in is how different societies interact with their different resource environments. Uh, so for example, if we contrast Brazil with China, Brazil has a lot of land, a lot of water, a lot of sun, whereas China with a huge population has relatively very scarce agricultural land and hardly anything like the amount of water that, uh, that, that, that Brazil has, and that presents massively different problems in the, two, in the two countries. In terms of climate change, obviously a lot of attention is paid to the burning up of fossil carbon, uh, um, fossil carbon and, and that is a major risk. But probably there's an underestimation of the significance of the, of the production of food. In fact, uh, agriculture and the conversion of land for producing food produces two and a half times more greenhouse gases than the total amount used in, in global transport. And we know that the world population is going to be growing from about six billion to about nine billion, with changing food demand, increasing meat consumption, for example. And all of this will mean that that amount of greenhouse gas from, from producing food is set to increase and in, a, in, in some ways all of this process it has a bit gone under the radar as certainly as far as uh, policy, uh, the policy, uh, policy agendas. My research is trying to look at these dynamic processes of how societies interact with their, their own resource in, in, in environments and I like to think about it in terms of not anthropogenic uh, change but sociogenic change climate change. Sociogenic, because sociogenic, we're looking at how societies are interacting in, in, in different ways with their resource environments and producing greenhouse gases in very different ways in their different, in their different, in, in their different contexts. In my research, I, I like to take something that is fairly simple to look at these complex, complex uh, major global issues. So I take something like the soya bean and, th and think about how significant that is in, in understanding, in understanding the, uh, the, these sociogenic uh, climate change dynamics. Looking at China, in the 1980s, it had a policy from then of opening up its market in, internally, but also had a, a, an absolutely dominant driver for food security. So it wanted to feed its growing population with food self-sufficiency and increasing uh, its own capacity to, uh, to, 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 to produce food. And it did this, or at least one of the ways that it did this, was to subsidize the use of chemical fertilizers. It produced enormous amounts of, uh, 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 of chemical fertilizer with its own national industries, and also then subsidized farmers to use the, the fertilizers on their land. And the result of that has been to uh, to distribute, to use, to in fact, to pollute the land to an, a, an extraordinary extent. So n now, roughly 30% of that, all their agricultural land has has uh, had too much fertilizer put on it. Too much fertilizer means, uh, first of all, an immediate impact on their environment. The groundwater has been severely p polluted. Land has become acidified. And you can see this in, 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 uh, in China where you, you, you can find rivers that are absolutely chock full of dead fish. And that's partly a result of the over-fertilization of their land in their drive for food security. The longer term impact of that is that uh, nitrous oxide which comes off uh, the, uh, uh, the, the land from, from over-fertilization contributes very significantly to, to, to global climate change. So you see a, an immediate impact and then there's a, a, a long a long term impact. But by the by the end of the 90 or the middle of the 1990s and the beginning of, of uh, the, the 21st century, China realized that it was no longer going to be able to be food self-sufficient. And in particular, it needed to meet the demand growing demand for, for meat and especially pork, and how was it going to get the animal feed for, for this growing demand for pork? And the answer 
lies in the soya bean. But where was China going to be able to produce enough soya beans to uh, feed its growing, uh, its growing demand for, for, for pork? And the answer is Brazil. It turned to Brazil to, uh, to import absolutely huge quantities of soya beans. And what did that mean in Brazil? So now we're shifting to a totally different land and water and sun-endowed uh, sun, uh, uh, country. And in Brazil, thousands and thousands of hectares were converted from virgin territory, from, uh, from, uh, from the Amazon, from the, uh, from the savanna areas in Brazil, from, uh, in, into agricultural land to produ produce soy, soy uh, for, for China. And this process of land conversion and deforestation is not only destroying biodiversity, but very significantly contributes to greenhouse gas, uh, greenhouse gas em emissions. And this is what we call land extensification. It's spreading the zone of agricultural land into previously non-agricultural land. A completely different uh, kind of um, of climate change dynamic that uh, uh, that in, in Brazil. So in 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 Brazil, you have land extensification producing greenhouse gases. In China, you had intensification with the overuse of fertilizers. That, to me, is is of the contribution that, that social science needs to look at. It needs to think about the, the dynamics of climate change in terms of sociogenesis and the different dynamics that different societies contribute, contribute to, to, uh, to the, uh, the, the, uh, the risks that there are to the planet today. And it's, a, and it's a story that is told, I think, brilliantly just by a simple bean.